Hello, hi. Welcome to the classroom. Please like, share, and definitely don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Mixed economic system. Many democracies operate a mixed economic system, which combines aspects of capitalism and socialism, or planned economics and market economic systems. The idea in a mixed economy is that capitalism will create the best environment for the market forces to take effect, and thus have those proceeds taxed to provide the funds to enable the financing of infrastructure. The belief here, just as the government believes in South Africa, is that they can ensure fair market competition and humane labor standards. From there, they will offer economic safety nets for businesses and individuals. Mixed economies will regulate prices in certain industries, whereas in other industries, they will allow them to be dictated through normal supply and demand activities. Industry self-regulation is key. If it is not possible, the government will then step in. What is being produced? A combination of what consumers are prepared to pay for and what the government regards as important. How is production going to take place? Both the government and entrepreneurs decide on this. It depends on the product or service under discussion. For whom is it being produced? Well, both the government and private consumer needs are taken into consideration. Advantages. This type of system rewards the most efficient producers with profits. And by doing so, it will encourage innovation. The expanded government role will make sure that the less competitive members of society are well taken care of. The government creates work opportunities because certain goods and services need to be provided. What other advantages do you think exist in a mixed economic system? Disadvantages. Big businesses can lobby government for more regulation. And once this happens, the system can create a situation with businesses which are too big to fail. This can create the same environment that created the 2008 financial crisis which started in America. Central planning for certain industries can create problems where industries which are government subsidized will slow down the country's economic growth. In this regard, the state-owned entities in South Africa have through inefficiencies and bailouts slowed down the South African economy. What other disadvantages can you think of in a mixed economic system? The global economy. All the countries of the world make up the global economy. The strength of an economy is rated according to its gross domestic product. A national economy is measured in monetary terms. National economies have local currencies that differ in value from each other. So the World Bank determines purchasing power of a currency based on its GDP. As a business term, globalization refers to the tendency of international trade, investments, information technology, and outsourced manufacturing to weave the economies of diverse countries together. It is not an entirely new concept. As far back as ancient times, caravans traveled vast distances to obtain valuables like salt, spices, and gold, then traded or sold them once back in their home countries. With today's technology, globalization has brought the entire world together with multinational corporations manufacturing, buying, and selling goods across the globe. 
For example, a car company based in Japan might have auto parts manufactured in several different developing countries, then ship the parts to another country for assembly, and then sell the finished car around the world. Globalization has been credited with helping shift wealth to less developed countries, as corporations take advantage of the lower cost of labor and operation in the developing world, thus creating jobs and economic benefits for the local economy. China is a good example of a country that has benefited immensely from globalization. However, globalization can be a double-edged sword. When countries' economies are intertwined, economic downturns in one country can cross borders and affect the economies of other countries. Globalization is also often blamed for the loss of jobs in developed nations, as corporations ship manufacturing jobs overseas in order to save costs. The truth of the situation is that when we are referring to global economy, we are referring to the international trading of goods and services. The fact that transportation and communications are being improved daily through the development of technology makes our world a smaller place. So some of the advantages of globalizations are businesses no longer exclusively compete within their own countries they are actively competing abroad, importing and exporting. is a daily reality of the economy, and this leads to a wider variety of goods and services which are available to consumers. There is freedom to work elsewhere. If someone explores this option, they are allowed to work in other countries. Capital can move freely between countries. Businesses invest in countries that offer opportunities to make a profit. People often regard South Africa as a third world country. This is not necessarily the case. We often meet the characteristics of a first world country, but we also exhibit characteristics of a third world country. South Africa can be regarded as having a dualistic economy. This means that we are a combination of both first and third world. This is not a second world country. Second world countries are those countries which were once behind the Iron Curtain. Countries like Russia, where communism no longer exists. Thank you for joining us for this lesson. If you learned something, please give this video a like, share and subscribe.